with therapeutic potential. Uh, cell and gene therapies used in regenerative medicine, deep brain stimulation, and uh, rehab methods and devices. We sponsor a significant amount of work to better understand the neurobiological basis of PTSD. Significant research is underway to discover objective techniques to distinguish between PTSD and TBI. Uh, these efforts are focused on neuroimaging uh, techniques as well as biomarkers specific to PTSD and mild TBI. We have also invested significantly in research to identify the most promising drugs to treat various PTSD symptoms um, and to use in combination with different psycho psychotherapies. Uh, lastly, suicide is a significant public health problem that has been identified as the third leading cause of death in young people and the 11th overall leading cause of death in the U.S. population. You know, uh, uh, until recently, military suicide rates have been significantly lower uh, than general population rates. However, in 2004, military suicide rates began to climb and today um, exceed the age-adjusted civilian rate. In order to better understand the factors related to suicide, the DOD and NIH <coughs> are involved in an ongoing collaboration, as, we, as my colleague described before, to conduct the largest scale study of suicide in the military. The project is the largest epidemiologic study of mental health, psychological resilience, suicide risk, suicide-related behaviors, and suicide deaths in the U.S. Army. Uh, drug, including prescription drugs and um, alcohol abuse, is a significant health problem in the military. Uh, almost 30 percent of the Army's suicide rates, or suicide deaths, from 2003 to 2009, and more than 45 percent of the non-fatal suicide behavior from 2005 to 2009 involved the use of drugs or alcohol. Increased prescription use among the military has led to heightened concern with overdoses. We have sponsored a significant amount of substance abuse research that addresses, that, that includes epidemiologic studies as well as studies investigating prevention and treatment interventions. Further, Epidemiologic research is needed to accurately characterize drug use and misuse to include risk factors and to identify potential barriers to treatment-seeking behavior. Um, Mr. Chairman, the Department of Defense continues to perform and manage exceptional medical research and development for the population that demands and deserves the finest care available. I'm, I'm proud to be here today to represent the men and women who conduct these programs and I thank them for their service. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to be with you today and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Rauch. Uh, we, we have a vote on, uh, we're going to go for another five minutes. What I'd like to do is um, um, did you want to go first? Yeah, I, I, <coughs> yeah, in, I, uh, yeah whatever you want. Yeah, in sure. well, in deference to uh, Mr. Kennedy, I'm going to give him uh, the first uh, question here. Uh, after he concludes with his questions, we're going to go vote. Uh, do we know how many votes there are? How many votes? Pardon? Five. 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 Um, and then we will come back here at 4 o'clock because it's going to... Uh, five votes will take up about an hour. So, um, Mr. Kennedy, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Kennedy, why don't you start? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, uh, the <coughs> I appreciate your contributions to this hearing enormously and the testimony submitted and the points that you've made and the questions that we'll get into over the course of the time when we come back. I think we'll really bring some more illumination to all that. be very useful. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity in response to uh, Dr. Rausch's point, first thank him for his service to our country in the military. 
um, to hit one point home that I believe needs to get hit home hard. And that is there's no difference between psychological and neurological. And if you want to know why the, there's the highest suicide rates now amongst militaries, they're not supposed to have problems. But when we have a military that's talking about their problems in terms of 30% of the suicides are caused by alcohol, alcohol is caused by their combat wound. So that 30% is an alcohol. That 30% is a result of their combat wound. And the last word about drug-seeking behaviors. No. Self-medicating because they got a combat wound. Physical. And that we have a, a dual track, one, objective diagnostic tools for TBI as like a separate track from objective diagnostic tools from what you said, behavioral. It's not behavioral, it's physiological. You want to know why there's the stigma? Because the military refuses to talk about this as a combat wound, PTSD. Physical changes in the brain as a result of prolonged exposure to cortisol. We still have the leading medical experts coming up here and testifying. In spite of the report that was just released last week, which I'd like to submit for the record if it's all right with the chairman. Without objection. I think you were right, Dr. Rush, about its being neurotrauma, but that doesn't apply to TBI. It applies to T PTSD and TBI. And I only can't hit this point home enough because if we don't get to the stigma of mental illness, we're never going to get to the science. And this notion that there's a dual track between the psychological versus the neurological. No, wait, wait a second. Let me just say, psychological is neurological. That's what we just learned on the board from the director of the National Institutes of Mental Health. It's neurological. Stop calling it psychological. Stop calling it behavioral. Stop calling it mental health and you'll have less veterans feeling stigmatized by it because we are the biggest stigmatizers with that nomenclature. When you have, and it's a fact, more veterans killing themselves in active service than are being killed in combat, there should be a wake up as to what we're doing. The last commission report just released, no mention of the physiological impact of the trauma of war uh, impacting suicide. All that we heard is psychological, behavioral, mental health. We re-stigmatized it. That suicide commission was an utter disaster, in my point. Because all it ended up doing is laying on top to these veterans that somehow they have something that happens to them after war. No, this happened to them while they were serving. It's a combat wound. It's not alcoholic, it's not drug seeking. It's a combat wound that ends up manifesting itself in these symptoms that then ultimately ends up as a suicide. And if we refer to it as alcohol-seeking behavior, drug-seeking behavior, or something else, we do injustice to the fact that these veterans are stigmatized by their behavior because it's a result of the neurological changes that their service incurred on their brains. And, and we can talk all day about science, but if we don't get this issue of stigma out on the table, we're never going to get anywhere as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for allowing me to We'll have time to come back. Thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, we're going to recess until uh, 4 o'clock, at which time uh, we'll come back and I have uh, questions for the panelists. And then we'll go to the next panel after it. I appreciate your patience. And uh, we will come back. And if it, the other members, uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Foster, if you're able to make it back, we'd be very grateful. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. We, we're recessed till 4. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. You got it.